Welcome back to VBPA Tutorials. I am Venkat. This is part 12 why and how to use DT work. So, till now, whatever the endpoints we have built, we have used the database entity to return the data. If you look at the repository we have built, we have built the temporary repository. When we are discussing about the entity framework, we will work with a real repository. But for now, we are working with in memory temporary repository. So, if you notice that this is an entity representing the data here, okay, this is the same class which will be representing the database table. But if you look at our controllers, we are returning the same classes, we are returning the data with same classes. But I'm saying that's not a good practice. It's better to use the DTOs instead of the database entities. To explain that, I'll take a simple example. I'll take a shopping cart example. So suppose this is a database and there is a data logic layer and there is a business logic layer and there is a presentation layer or UI layer. There is a table. So which is storing all the orders. I have the order with three products. One, two, three. Product A, product B, product C. Quantity is to 1, 3, 10 rupees each unit and the 5 rupees each unit and 20 rupees each unit. So this is the data inside my database table. When I want to present this data on the UI, I need to calculate total price of the order. At the same time, I need to add the taxes, government taxes if there are any. So we cannot store this information in the database table as the taxes information will be changing. So first I will read this data from database to the data logic layer. I'll read that data from database to data logic layer. This data logic layer will have the class just now I have showed you. So here it will be the class which is holding the ID and the product name and the quantity and the unit price. This is the class is required to store this information inside my c -sharp. So I am reading all this data and I am storing inside this class object. But when I came to the business logic layer, I need to calculate the total tax and the total price. Along with this particular class fields, I need to add more fields like a total, total and tax and tax percentage. So like this, I need to add additional fields to my particular class. That's where when we are applying business logic on top of the data we read from database, we may need additional details. That's why we need to add another class to store the data after business logic applied. And this one is the data which is directly read from database. We call this as a DTO and we will share this DTO data to the presentation layer. Presentation layer will present that, display that. Now the presentation layer will display the total price and the taxes applied and the percentage of tax applied and the product name and the unit price and the quantity. Everything it will display. Let's apply the same thing here for that. So we need to add the DTOs first. I am going to add the student DTO here. Student DTO. For now, in our example, there is no special business logic because we are building simple demo. We are using the same thing. We are Returning, we need to create object for student, student DTO. For each students, I'll create object for student DTO equal to new student DTO. And here, I'll apply ID equal to ID, then name equal to m dot name address equal to item dot address email equal to dot e. after that i'll students dot add student sorry this is object yeah object so my students dto object is ready we need to return like this the same thing here so what i did just now there is a repository of students. 
I have looped through every student and I have created a student DTO object for every student. I have added it into the student DTO list. So this is how we can prepare the student DTO out of the student data objects. We can also build this using the link query. So that is, so I'll copy this. I'll show you how to build it using a link query now. Let me comment this out for each loop. So this is using a link queue college repository dot students dot select intents to yes for student. So using link queue we can simply read like this. So what we are doing, we are reading all these students from this student's repository and we are selecting. While we are selecting, we are converting this particular student data into the new DTO class, DTO object. So in this, we will have the list of student DTO. So like this, using link queue, we can convert the student's list into the student's DTO list. So using link queue is a better choice compared to the for each. We can reduce the lines of code. This is for get students and for get student by ID. We got the student here. We need to return the student DTO. When we are returning where student DTO equal to new student DTO. So because this one is a single record, I am preparing like this student.id. So I am preparing student DTO from this student record. Student dot student name. Email equal to student dot address equal to student dot address. That's how we can prepare the student DTO object and we will return the student DTO. So this is how we need to prepare DTOs and return. So when we are preparing the DTOs, we actually need to apply the business logic, whatever we discussed, but this is a simple demo. So we do not have any business logic. That's why I have used the fields as it is. And when we are getting student by name also, we'll copy this and we will do this and we will return the student DTO and we will change the return type as a DTO. And this one is the delete endpoint. Here nothing needs to be changed. It's a simple Boolean data type return. This is how we can use the DTOs 